I'm pulling out all my stops right now. Seriously, I'm gonna go out on the limb and I'm gonna say that this is the one trick, one thing that you should know about your diet that is the cardinal rule. Okay, I'm pulling out all the stops. For me to say that, that means I can never say that again, right? So literally, this is the most important thing and that is to never combine your fats with your carbs. And I'm gonna explain exactly why and you're gonna have a very concrete understanding and it's all gonna make sense. So please stick with me to the end of this video so you have a full comprehension of this and you're not just getting little bits and pieces. You're tuned into the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos on Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Okay, also wanna make sure you hit that subscribe button and then hit that bell icon so you can turn on notifications, know whenever I go live. Also, want to make sure that you check out ButcherBox down below in the description. So if you eat grass-fed, grass-finished meat, and you're tired of paying super high prices at the grocery store, check out ButcherBox, because literally, they'll deliver it right to your doorstep, and you're gonna get grass-fed, grass-finished meat cheaper than what you'll find at the grocery store, like literally. So go ahead and check them out. They're a big sponsor of this channel, and they always bring special discounts to my audience, so down below in the description. Now, let's go ahead and let's get into some science. All right, here's the thing, fat, stores fat, just like carbs store fat. There's this common misconception out there that fats don't spike insulin and that if we have fats, we don't ever drive up our insulin. The fact is we do indirectly, okay? The fact of the matter is, is that insulin is definitely a key contributor to gaining fat, but it doesn't end there, okay? It's not the only culprit. There's a lot more to it than just insulin. When we combine carbohydrates and fats, we have this huge double whammy effect. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a very broad oversimplification of this whole video first, and then I'll break it down more. Insulin, when we eat carbs, opens up the cell, okay? It allows the cell to receive glucose. The whole function of insulin is to allow the cell to open up to receive glucose. We eat carbs, insulin spikes. So the carbs come into the cell because insulin opened the door. Well, the door's open. So if we ate fat with those carbs, any burglar or any bad guy can come in the cell because insulin opened the door. So if carbs open the door, then fat's gonna come along in for the ride. Okay, now that is not biologically correct, but that's an oversimplification to at least get the point across. Now let's break down the other hormones that are at play and why this whole process is so very important. Insulin ultimately stores fat because it activates lipoprotein lipase, okay? Insulin stores fat because it turns on a fat storing enzyme, but it also slows down fat burning because it turns off hormone sensitive lipase. So in simple terms, it turns on fat storage and turns off fat burning. But there's two other hormones that work synergistically with insulin, okay? And they also complement each other in negative ways, I guess. So let's talk about those. The first one is acylation stimulating protein or ASP. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna call it ASP. ASP is actually triggered by fat, okay? So when we consume fat, ASP is elevated, and ASP triggers insulin. So yes, even if you consume pure oil, pure fat, you will still spike your insulin. Who would have thought? Okay, so you eat fat, ASP spikes, which causes insulin to spike. But here's where it gets really crazy. That insulin has a negative feedback loop. So what that means is the insulin that you've already spiked causes more ASP. So fat causes ASP, causes insulin, which causes more ASP, which causes more insulin, which causes more ASP. Where does it end? It's a negative feedback loop that can get bigger and bigger and bigger. So fat can indeed spike your insulin and store more fat. We'll talk about how this gets exponentially dangerous when you mix it with carbs in just a moment, but I wanna talk about the next hormone, which is glucose-dependent insulinotropic protein. Okay, this one is more so in the gut, okay? And this one is really interesting. So here's an analogy, or not even an analogy, an example. If we consume glucose, our insulin level is going to spike pretty high. If we consume carbs, our insulin level is gonna go up pretty high. But if we were to inject glucose or carbohydrates right into our bloodstream, our insulin wouldn't spike as high as if we ate it. Okay, that's because again, this GIP, this other protein, this other component that's in our gut is sensitive just in our gut. Now, this is where things get really interesting when we look at fats and carbs again. So fats trigger GIP. 
GIP stores fat directly. But insulin, or carbohydrates, also trigger GIP. So let's break it down like this. Here's how carbs and GIP store fat. Carbs alone equals insulin. That equals fat storage. Another scenario, carbs alone equals GIP, which equals insulin, which equals fat storage. So carbs trigger fat storage two ways, okay? Fat alone triggers a little bit of GIP, just a small amount, okay? But through a different mechanism. So fats and carbs trigger a double whammy of GIP, okay? So then we have fats that trigger GIP, carbs are also triggering GIP, but then carbs are also triggering insulin. So when we combine them together, we have a huge spike in insulin via the GIP pathway. Okay? So you don't have to understand all the complex parts of this, but you do have to understand that hormonally, when we combine fats and carbs, we open that cell doorway wide open. So they just flood in like crazy. Okay? Now let's talk about that ASP for a second. Okay? ASP is stimulated by fat, remember. Okay? ASP is not stimulated by carbs, but it is indirectly because of the insulin. We put it like this. If you consume carbs alone, you have a spike in insulin. Okay, that spike in insulin stores fat by itself, but that spike in insulin also triggers ASP, which triggers more fat accumulation. If we have fat alone, then we spike our ASP, which stores fat through a different pathway. If we combine fats and carbs, then we're storing fat two ways. We're storing it from the carbs, spiking the insulin, and we're also storing it from the fat, activating the ASP. Okay, I know it's super, super complex, the point is, is that fat activates different fat storage mechanisms and carbs activate other fat storage mechanisms. But carbs and fats combined compound each other so that it's more than just one plus one. It's like one plus one equals seven. The point is, is don't open the cellular door unless you are very, very clear with what's going to go into the cell. So you either go high fat with no carbs or super low carbs, or you go high carb or moderate carb with very low fat with meals together, okay? You don't want to combine the two. Have a high fat, low carb breakfast and have a high carb, low fat lunch, okay? Just mix them up, but don't combine them together. Don't have the eggs and toast. If you wanna do carbs and fats, separate your meals. High fat meal, high carb meal. Create a line, a clear line between them. And I promise you, this is going to help you stay healthy and stay lean and make it so that you're not accumulating gobs of fat simply because of this like hormonal smorgasbord that's just a bunch of chaos in your body. So I know that it's a complex subject, but the end message is simple. Fat's separate, carb separate. If you want me to give you some more ideas on this in terms of what this actually looks like, like how much should you combine of each and yada yada, let me know. But I want to make sure that there's some interest in this video first before we take it a step further. As always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here on my videos, and I'll see you in the next one.